Well, let's see if this next question is dealing with a goof. This was sent to cornydrivethru at gmail.com from Nathan in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Love the shows. One of my favorite stories. Thank you very much, Nathan. I love your hot dogs. No, you don't. See, I love Nathan's hot dogs. You're a liar and a pretender. I like Nathan's hot dogs, but they're not as good as cheesesteaks. Love the shows. One of my favorite stories that's been told repeatedly is the tale of Paulie dangerously allegedly meeting Jack Nicholson <laughs> at the China Club in 1989. During the meeting, Jack apparently gave Paul the advice, watch out for the racket, kid. Paul was obviously a fan, as I recently watched an old clip of him wearing a Batman t-shirt during a segment of Funk's Grill on NWA Power Hour, also from 1989. Is there a question here from the listener? Jim tends to think Paul was telling one of his overly embellished tales. However, new evidence has come to light... Oh, no. ...that Jack Nicholson may have indeed been a wrestling fan. Below is a screen grab from Jack's official Facebook page. <laughs> it's most certain that Jack has a team of people that tend to his social media. Yet I doubt they would post this without it having some air of truth. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. What, what do you guys think? I noticed Paul Lee and Jim are absent from the list, and what I have here is from the official, allegedly the official Jack Nicholson Facebook page, a picture of Harley Race, Ric Flair, and John Cena, and it says, Jack Nicholson is a huge fan of professional wrestling. His all-time favorites are Harley Race, Ric Flair, and John Cena. <laughs> Jim, being presented with this evidence, does it change you labeling Paulie a liar for the conversation with Jack Nicholson in the China Club? Well, no, just because a blind squirrel finds a nut doesn't mean he regained his sight. It, anything can happen. Uh, but it, is there documentation that you're looking at that that is re really from Jack Nicholson's Facebook page or whatever? I have... Something here that says it's from Jack Nicholson's online. Wait, don't know, Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Jack Nichols. Jack Nicholson online, but it does not have a blue check mark or anything that indicates it's certainly official, so I really don't know. And I could even buy Flair and Harley Race, because Jack Nicholson's older than I am, but we're in Cena coming. Um, I mean, both of these things may be true. But I will, I will just briefly again indicate or tell the story that Paul told me and then you decide because what Paul told me was this was back when we were doing the Midnight Midnight Angle. We were at TBS at Techwood Drive, the studios, not center stage, wasn't there yet. And everybody knew that Paul went home to New York for the weekends when he wasn't working especially when we didn't have the, the managers on the road at that period of time. He was always, anytime he could get to New York, he'd go to New York. And he comes in one day at the taping, and as soon as I walk in, he grabs me, right? I can't even set my bag down. He said, you'll never guess where I was over the weekend. No, Paul, I never will. The China Club. Okay, well, that makes sense. He, you know, loves the China Club. That was the hot place. Paul always wanted to go to the hot places. I, meanwhile, would like to sit in the backyard and have a hot dog or a cheesesteak and watch fucking squirrels. But anyway, so then I said, well, I, that's good, Paul. You're at the China Club. Guess who I saw? I, I don't know, Paul. Jack Nicholson. Yeah, <laughs> Harley is coughing like she's choking over this already over there. I got to give her a Benadryl. Um. And I said, wait, I said, you saw Jack Nicholson. Well, that's good. He said, well, guess what he said? I said, now, wait a minute, Paul. If Jack Nicholson spoke to you, now it's getting good. He said, oh, yeah. I said, well, what did he say? He said he walked over to me, put his arm around me, and said, hey, kid, watch the tennis racket. I said, oh, God, now, Paul, I can believe you were in the China Club. I can even believe that you saw Jack Nicholson at the China Club. But now... You are asking me to believe that Jack Nicholson is currently watching TBS and is a fan of our angle. He said, I swear on my father's life. Hey, God damn it. Now, 
you are giving me the choice of deciding whether Jack Nicholson is a fan of our angle or you don't care whether your father lives or dies. And that's all the, the evidence that I've gotten to this day that that conversation took place. But I guess stranger things have happened. It, it helped also, though, that Paul Lee often had run-ins with people that he did wonderful impersonations of. Do you think maybe Paul has been unfairly labeled a liar over all these years if, in fact, it all started with a meeting with Jack Nicholson that did happen? Well, but then now, once again, we're going back to the blind squirrel theory. You're going to have to then try to tell me that every time that blind squirrel went out, he ran over a nut, but he still couldn't see. Uh, just because it happened once doesn't mean it's going to happen a lot. I'm I'm still firmly in the camp of I wouldn't believe Paul Heyman if his tongue was notarized, but he's one of the great performers in the history of television. Well, he always says nice things about you, but let's go on to our next question here, Jim. You know, I tell you what, that Paulie, he's litigious. Oh. We're going he's there. Very he's very litigious. He sues people for a variety of things, whether he has any grounds to do it or not. That's how he's gotten away with a lot of things. And that's why I totally think that the fact that he said the comment about his father, this, it ha may have to be true because that would be the person who would sue for him. Because his father was an attorney. Yeah. But he, he may or may not have wanted his father dead because maybe he heard that there was this new attorney in a legal oh, school over in West no. Virginia <laughs> that was going to be within 20 or 30 years, which is nothing to a vampire like Haman, who's lived for thousands of years off the blood of younger people. It's nothing to him to wait 20 or 30 years until that lawyer gets out of legal school and he has set himself up as the most successful personal injury attorney in the whole state of West Virginia you know who I'm talking about. That's who Paul Heyman would have hired back then. None other than... Call Stephen P. Show or two. Still to the rest. Yes, folks, I'll tell you what. Stephen P. New has been around for a while, but not that long because he's still a young, energetic man. He wasn't practicing law in the 80s or elsewise. I would have got away with a lot more things, but he's practicing law now. And not only that, but he's finished practicing and he's really good at it. And now he's just doing it all across the country. And you can be a part of it because some of the lawsuits now are being filed in several different states concerning the babies born addicted to opioids. The pharmaceutical companies lied to the doctors. Many people were affected, and now there's class action suits that Stephen is filing. The first suits have been filed. More to come in a variety of states across the country. You can be involved. It doesn't have to just be in West Virginia, and he's especially interested in finding the grandparents or foster parents or adoptive parents of kids that could have been born with that problem because the chain of custody there, if they're not with the birth parents, sometimes information gets lost. So he wants to track those folks down. If you know anybody that's the grandparent, adoptive parent, foster parent, or just keeping an eye on some kid, uh, you might want to give Stephen a call at 888-692-8084 or email at newlawoffice.com. Not only that, but Stephen, as we've mentioned, has helped a variety of the Cult of Cornet members with their problems. We read an email a couple of weeks ago from someone who called him with a, a question, and he called him back because he does all this stuff personally because Stephen is a freak of nature and never sleeps. Uh, but also, he's representing some folks in the pro wrestling genre and is getting into that uh, more widely in the year 2022, and big things are going to come from that. We're going to have some announcements also, but one way or another, whether you're a civilian, whether you're someone in the wrestling industry, or whether you're just out there not knowing where to turn because the legal system in this country has put you under their thumb and is grinding you under your thumb, under their thumb, you need somebody 
to take their middle finger and pry that thumb off of you, and that would be Stephen P. New at newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084. Like I said, if you've been charged with sodomy, he'll get it reduced to tailgating. If you have a problem, he's got the solution. Stephen P. New.